Let's dive into my Solana long trade earlier this week that made me big profits. What we can see over here on Solana, first we are going to go over the chart and then afterwards we are going to go over the statistics that I use as Confluence for my trade that I'm using a dashboard for. What we can see over here is that we were seeing this fake break of structure towards the upside. Now what happens with a fake break of structure like this is that people are opening up long positions inside of this consolidation area. And that consolidation area where the long positions are being opened, we have to figure out where these people are going to place their stop loss. Well, I think it is pretty obvious that most of the people are going to put their stop loss beneath this low over here. So what happened next is that Solana got a push to the downside towards that liquidity pool that was being engineered by this push towards the upside and the consolidation that followed afterwards. So we take out that very, very important sell side liquidity pool. Now that's the area where I'm potentially becoming interested in longs on Solana once price section, liquidity, market structure and ranges are giving me the correct confirmations to get a high probability long position. Now what we can see over here on the 15 minute time frame is that when we start analyzing the local price section over here is that we can identify that this local high brought us to this lower low compared to this low that brought us to that local high which means that I can start mapping out this level as a pivotal level to break based off price action and market structure in order to turn bullish again. Now what we can see over here is that first we are swing failing that level and then when we move to a bit of a lower time frame on a five minute time frame we can see that after swing failing that level over here we go and seek more sales liquidity over here. So we once again take out local sales liquidity over here. And after taking out that local sales liquidity, this is where things are starting to become interesting, right? Because we can see that afterwards we get a very, very strong push towards the upside. Now that push towards the upside is giving us the break of structure over here on the 15 minute time frame that I was seeking for. It is not only giving us a break of structure that I was seeking for, but we also took out high time frame sales liquidity and low time frame sales of liquidity before getting that strong push towards the upside. So both price action wise and liquidity wise, we are already looking at strong confirmations for a potential reversal towards the upside. Now we know that liquidity wise, we also always need to have a drawn liquidity towards the opposite side of our trade in order to get a valid bias. What we can see over here is that we have a very strong and impulsive move towards the downside, right? Where price didn't really consolidate anywhere. Also across the board, we do not really see any bearish sweeps. For example, over here, there was some liquidity resting, but instead of sweeping that liquidity and then continuing the bearish order flow to the downside, instead, we just get a slight pullback and then continue to the downside. So what is happening because of that is that we are engineering a lot of liquidity towards the upside that we can then target as our drawn liquidity. Also, since we get a very strong push to the downside, right, and we break through a previous low, retail traders are getting extremely bearish. So after a strong push towards the downside and a consolidation phase that is being followed afterwards, get into the mind of the retail traders, they start shorting the price of Solana, right, expecting further continuation to the downside, right, because they are seeing a potential bear flag that has been formed over here right which means that they are going to place the stop loss of their short positions above the highs that i've marked out right over here which means that we have a clear drawn liquidity as well now by getting this break of structure and having the liquidity confluence i got a trigger to start looking for longs but one thing that really really got my interest over here is that previous bearish for value gap that we created over here and then we flipped over here by closing this hour one candle in the green above it. That was a major, major sign of strength to me and definitely triggered a potential long scenario for me. So that means that I wanted to start looking for longs upon the pullback inside of the previous bearish for value gap that I'm going to mark out right over here. Now we know that we want to start looking for an invalidation. And for that invalidation, for the bullish thesis on the day on a Monday, I started using the statistics dashboard. So over here, we can see that we have a statistics dashboard that we can use. I can select the Solana pair and I can just quickly manually fill in at what our P1 and P2 have been formed at. By filling in these hours, the dashboard automatically is going to be providing me with certain statistics of how high the probability is of a certain P1 or P2 to hold for the day. Now, when we go quickly back to the Solana chart over here, we can see that P1 
which is the, the daily low on a Monday, was formed at hour zero. And then we were forming the P2 over here at hour eight. So now we are once again going to go back to the statistics dashboard and we're going to fill in P1 at hour zero and P2 at hour eight right over here. Now what we can see is that P1 at that time already had a 51.6% chance of holding. And the more hours that pass by without a new P1 being formed, the higher the probability becomes of P1 to hold. On the other hand, we can see that P2, which was formed at hour eight, only had a 2.6% chance of holding. And we can see that there's a very high probability to form P2 after hour 14. Because when we add all of these numbers together, we can see that we are combined maybe getting at a total of, let's say, I don't know, 70 to 80% chance of forming P2 after hour 14. Now, how can we use this in our advantage? We can use this in our advantage to anticipate a pullback in between hour 8 and hour 14 to fill our order in which P1 over here can be used as the invalidation since it already has a very, very high probability of holding. Right? And we expect P2 to be formed later during that day after hour 14 to then target our take profit target. Right? So I started looking for a long over here. Okay? And I had a second entry over here at the local low where we had some more sales of liquidity resting in case we would be sweeping that low. So based on both my analysis and statistics, I started looking for a long position like this. Eventually, our first order got filled, in which we saw a beautiful bounce afterwards. I probably should have taken profits here already, but I decided to let my trade run. Didn't move my stop loss to break even yet. I let it run completely. We got a local sweep. We saw a very, very choppy price action on a Monday. And eventually, overnight, we even filled that second entry over here, which made our average entry price go all the way over here. This is something that I want to teach you guys. Always, in my opinion, according to my system, use a second entry as a potential DCA order for your longs or as a potential DCA order for your shorts. Because if your bias and thesis still turn out to be right, but your execution isn't perfect, and instead price pushes slightly towards your first entry, or I mean through your first entry, it will fill that second order and because of that you get a lot better entry price which increases the RR but also if while the trade is running you think your bias turns out to be wrong you have a higher probability that after filling your second entry price still bounces back into slight profit or towards break even which will give you the opportunity to close your trade still at break even or in slight profit and will mitigate a lot of risk over a longer period of time for yourself so always manage to get a first entry in, but always have a second entry ready to get hit as well. Over here is a perfect example why it's so, so powerful. So we fill that second entry, and then instead of having my first day profit target over here, I could see that we were engineering a lot of liquidity over here with these highs, right? And I always use the second to highest high as my take profit target. We got a strong push towards the upside eventually, Right, we saw a lot of choppy price action, as I said, and then we slightly front run this high over here. At this point, I was like, This cannot happen once again. That we are once again going to front run my take profit target, but I remained very, very patient and I didn't stress at all. I did tighten my stop loss to this low at this point over here to mitigate some risk. So at this point, I was only risking 0.75 R instead of 1 R on this position. Eventually, we can see that price was still continuing to chop. I was very, very happy that I didn't move my stop loss, for example, beneath this low into profit, but I trusted my setup, I trusted my system, I could see that price was just chopping around inside of a range, but that we were engineering a lot of liquidity over here. I set my first profit target over here, which was already an RR of three, which was a very big RR, of course. So I decided to take 50% profits right there if we would have gone there, right? Eventually we can see the price pushed up, got a very strong push up, hit our first profit target, locking in 1.5R on the account. But after locking in 1.5R on the account, something very, very interesting happened. And this is once again a lesson that I will teach you guys. Don't marry your bias and thesis. If a trade is running and while the trade is running, price section liquidity 
ranges are giving you certain confirmations that your bias should flip to the downside when you're in longs or should flip towards the upside when you're shorts, don't be greedy on your position and make sure to close it in a profit. Because at this point, we are basically still risking money because there's profit on the table, right? And what you could see over here, based on that liquidity high, is that we were literally creating the cleanest swing failure pattern ever. Because we wick above that significant liquidity high, then we slightly close this green candle below, and then the next red candle we close beneath it as well. And at this point, when price was trading somewhere over here, I knew that I had to close the remaining of the position to lock in another R on the account. Because otherwise, I'm basically still risking that 1%, right? Because the trade is running in 1% profit on the account. Let's say 1% for your account means $1,000 in profit, right? Then you are still risking $1,000, if you understand what I mean. And if market structure, liquidity, ranges, statistics are pointing that there's probably going to come more downside and that your trade is going to get stopped out to break even, you shouldn't be risking that one hour on the account, right? Because you're still risking money at that point hard-earned money that you have to lock in. So I saw the swing failure pattern and then decided to close the remaining of the position. Eventually we see that it turned out to be the correct decision because otherwise over here we would have been stopped out at break even. And before you think that I'm one of those guys that only shares his wins, two weeks ago I took a big fucking loss on an AVEX long position and I also shared a trade recap on that loss on my YouTube channel as well. I will leave a link in the description so my bias was correct based on analyzing the chart, on price section liquidity ranges and also based on the statistics for that day. My execution was very well, with both hitting my first and second entry, getting a very nice average entry price and quite decent margin in. While the trade was running, I adjusted my take profit target based on what I was seeing, where the liquidity was being engineered and how price action was behaving. And after that first take profit target got hit, I once again adjusted my bias and thesis and I decided to manage my trade in a certain manner that locked me in another one hour on the account. The past few weeks, my execution and bias have been on point. But the problem with a few trades was that my management on the trades was sucking. It was, it was, it, it just simply sucked, right? I, I either moved my stop loss to break even too fast or I didn't move my stop loss to break even at all. So my execution and bias were right. That is something that gave me a lot of peace because I knew that, that the winning trades would return. But this time my management was on point because I reflected back on the previous trades where the management was actually horrible. And I decided to adjust that in a certain manner that now made me lock in a lot of gains on my account. 